Then I'll give you some examples, as I said. Now, example of speed, how we were able to do. We have one of the leading fashion brand. One of our companies who were able to work in a leading fashion brand, where they had a need to reduce their design concept to first sample cycle time, which took seven weeks for them, six to seven weeks, but design cycle to first sample. They were discussed, this fashion brand was able to work with one of the manufacturing plant where they send their designers to the factory every season and the, the factory employed in-house designers and were able to do all the back office work of the designers in the manufacturing plant and was able to, dis, able to do the cycle time which was seven weeks earlier to reduce it to two weeks from the concept to the first proto development and this happens every season and this particular manufacturer became the sole supplier for this category of item in the world so that is something where empowerment and partnership sorry back. empowerment and partnership delivering speed is one example of many we have another manufacturer who was working on innovation. There are many examples of innovation in process, but I will just touch on you within the time available, one example on innovation of a product. Where one of the manufacturer was able to work with the existing supply chain partners using the existing technology, was a silicon technology, was able to improve on it to give better characteristic for the swimsuit, and which they of course patented it and some of the customers and re retailers have embraced this technique and they have seen results. This again, collaboration among supply chain partners in delivering an innovative product. There is one more example I will touch before I go to the final session. It's on a partnership. One of the largest retailer from UK He's sourcing from Sri Lanka for over 25 years. Almost 21% of the apparel production is sourced out of Sri Lanka, second only to China. They set up their supply chain hub in Sri Lanka to bring down all the goods from the region, most through the supply chain, where drop shipping, other quality control, and other activities take place. The same retailer launched their global sustainability drive from Sri Lanka for their co-products and for the same retailer there are factories in Sri Lanka who set up world's first green eco plants and we were the we are the country who have set up the first apparel manufacturing plants which have green factories which have which are designed to reduce the carbon footprint Finally, ladies and gentlemen, let me just wrap it up with what we see from Sri Lanka Apparel and my perspective, what is the future? How we can get into the future? In my belief, for any successful partnership, there has to be strategic alliance. Any transactional partnerships or businesses are not going to be the way forward. So what I believe is required is the ability to find the correct business partner in the correct region and in collaboration. I think same, these are same issues which were spoken by earlier speakers as well. And all these three has to come, just independently these three will not work. It has to come with transparency and trust. As long as these are established, that will be the future. There are many brands even in Sri Lanka right now work on this basis and I believe those who have figured it out how a strategic alliance could be worked out are the winners in the current marketplace. So all these, if these are correct business partner, correct region, collaboration, transparency and trust will definitely lead to strategic alliance and I believe this is the way forward. And I would like to conclude, ladies and gentlemen, by saying we are at Sri Lanka Apparel ready to deliver this promise. And we expect 
every partner in the value chain to keep this in, in their highest priority because this is the way forward. I conclude at this point and I will open for any questions which you may have. Thank you. With what's going on in China right now, how do you find Sri Lanka fitting into this uh, void that might be uh, taking place in the marketplace? Now, as I said, now Sri Lanka is not a country who will depend, whom anyone can place order only on price. Whether it's what's happening in China or elsewhere, I believe Sri Lanka has a strength to deliver a total solution. So. The strength of Sri Lanka comes in not on just making a cut and sewn garment and delivering it to the stores for one season. It has to be a partnership where a manufacturing facility can work with a brand in partnering with them to give a certain solution where it will also bring in speed, innovation, along with price. And I'm sure we, are, we will be able to do that. And, and China will anyway continue to be one of the dominant players. I don't think it's going to change. But Sri Lanka has everything to offer to be the second alternative. That's what I believe. Yes. Yes. Can you comment on the, um, the developments that you have in Europe and uh, the future of the GSP program? That, 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 that one message that might be different than some of the other messages that we see come out of Sri Lanka. So I'm curious if you comment on what led up to that or whether you see that getting um, Sri Lanka getting a GSP status back again. You're talking about European GSP? European. Okay. European GSP. Sri Lanka got the European GSP probably about four or five years ago. Right? That was got initially, the European GSP we got on complying with certain compliance standards. And when we got the GSP Plus, mainly it was due to labor and other business related compliances. And we were benefiting from that. But subsequently, as many of you know, Sri Lanka had a war. We had a war which was just ended last year. So during the time of the war, the, sh the focus shifted. We are, we are the European Union brought in not only the labor and compliance standards, they brought in the human rights standards and linked it to the GSP+. Plus. So I, 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 may, I may not be able to know whether there are human rights violations took place during war or not. That's not the area which I want to do. But when a war is taking place, everything is not in very straightforward. So there are certain conditions European government gave to fulfill, which I was part of certain discussions. But what we felt is every time the certain conditions was you fulfill this condition, GSP will be given. When we went and fulfilled that condition, the yardstick moved 10 yards further. Then we went and met that, it moved another 10 yards further. So that's the point where the government came in and said enough is enough. There seems to be not a genuine reason for this GSP. And they said no, we don't want to go in that directory. And since GSP was withdrawn August 15th, and, and to, to be honest, there is not much significant, significant difference in our exports to Europe. Still we are going on, because when, when you have established the correct partnership with the brands, a reduction of 9%, our benefit was 9% on that particular time, though it's significant, they were able to bridge the gap with other means. So if you're asking me whether we will get the GSP plus back again, the, I think the Sri Lankan government has made a decision not to reapply because of what they faced. Yes. Hi here. Yes. Uh, Brian Rivera, Lululemon Athletica. I currently do significant business uh, in Sri Lanka through a seamless supplier. And one of my growth concerns surrounds the post-war security can you talk a little bit about uh, the condition today and where you see it in the next few years? Sri Lanka is a very safe country. 
and it can't be any safer than what it was before. Even during the war, when the war was being on, there was no much, no disruption. I would say there wasn't any disruption at all for business activities. War was in a different area. Right now, there is complete peace, and the whole country is open up. And the security, you don't have to worry anything. And, and more and more businesses are also moving towards the areas where the war was affected. So there will not be any doubt about the security. The, war, the progress is... So the limited. insurgency is dead. Sorry? Insurgency is dead. It's All finished. Right. <laughs> it's finished. Uh, is there any plan of making any uh, zones or incentives in the land left by the Tamil? Uh, I can't, I, I couldn't, I, who is asking the question? Is there any plan to uh, rehabilitate the Tamil zone by putting up apparel factories or something like yes. that? Or giving yes, in the areas where the, uh, where, the, uh, where the war was, there are two plans going on. Right now there is a plan by USAID, which is partly funded by US government, where they have funded for manufacturers to set up manufacturing units in those units, which is on a partnership. And many of our leading manufacturers are already committed to it. Apart from that, the government is giving a lot of, uh, lot of incentives for manufacturers to move in. And I know many manufacturing apparel companies are moving in there. And probably within the next six to nine months, there will be manufacturing facilities in those areas. I think I can take one last question. All right. Thank you.